So now I'm going to start um, switch gears just a tiny bit and we're going to talk about organic certification. Um, if you've been following throughout this series, we've really hit on a lot of the practices that you need to be aware of if you're trying to um, grow a crop following organic procedures and, and whatnot. But um, this presentation is more focused on how you actually obtain USDA organic certification, if that's something that makes sense for your operation. Um, of course, if you are to be making organic claims and um, at the market, you would have to have certification. And that's, I'm gonna go into these requirements in a little bit more detail, as well as um, information on the National Organic Program. Um, the reason that we have kind of attached this presentation with food safety is um, it's important to know that organic certification is not a food safety certification, um, but they do kind of overlap in a lot of their practices just because some of the practices do have to be deal with being at um, odds with, re with reducing risks um, and co-managing principles and, and so forth. So um, we're going to talk briefly on the National Organic Program, um, how you can be correct when making organic claims and organic labeling, um, proper use of the organic seal. And then I do want to mention the actual steps that you would need to take if you are interested in actually becoming certified organic and provide you resources with how to, how to do that. So on the National Organic Program, this program was developed essentially just to assure consumers that the agricultural products that are marketed as organic are meeting consistent uniform standards. Um, the National Organic Program is very detailed in its instructions and it, on how the retailers must store, label, and display organic products. Um, and this program is the one that's accrediting third-party organizations to come out and certify you. So your certifier, you can reach out to several different ones. I have some examples at the end of the presentation, but um, this program gives them that authority to come out and verify that you're meeting their national organic standards. Um, essentially, it's just ensuring a level playing field for producers um, with the intent of protecting consumer confidence and the integrity of that seal. So when a, someone goes to the store and sees that organic seal, essentially they, they understand what practices that farmer had to comply with in order to ensure that that product is certified organic. So a little bit on making organic claims. Um, most of the growers with this in this series have um, are smaller scale. But technically, there is a dollar amount that will determine whether or not you can claim your produce as organic without being certified. If you are selling above $5,000 worth of produce and making claims that your produce is organic, you have to be certified. If you are selling less than $5,000, you can say that it is organic. You still must follow all of the organic practices but you don't have to be certified. You still cannot put that label on your product. You can, if you're under $5,000, you can say it's organic, but you cannot use the organic seal. Um, so of course, if you have given any thought to becoming organic, you're, you know, you're aware that there is a, sometimes a pretty hefty cost to that certification. So I do wanna point out, you know, do your market research ahead of time and know what area it is that you're selling product, product produce in. Um, you need to decide if your customer base is really wanting that seal or if they are more after just that relationship with you and understanding what your practices are. Um, which, what is it that's important to them? Is it guarantee that they have that seal or is it just that they know you and what you're doing? Um, second part of this slide, what if I don't qualify for the exemption? Can I still represent my product as organically grown or just say that this is not certified organic if I'm not using that seal? And legally, no. Um, in order for you to make an organic claim, you have to either be certified or be exempt, um, meaning that you're selling less than $5,000. So a little bit more on that. Um, 
with the pictures, just for an example, if you're selling less than $5,000, it's totally fine for you to say this is organic, as you see in that picture, but you cannot use the seal um, and you still have to follow all of the National Organic Program standards. Um, if you are selling more than $5,000 um, and you're not certified, you cannot use the term organic and you definitely cannot use the seal. Um, of course, there will be, there can be some pretty hefty fines if you violate this. So um, just keep this in mind and make sure that you're understanding what it is that your um, customer base is looking for from you. Um, so this is what I mean by the organic, organic seal. Um, and pretty much everyone, this is because of the organic program, it's really uh, a very recognizable label. And when you see this, you you understand that this is a certified organically grown product. So that's why they're so strict on the use of the seals, trying to just maintain that integrity. All right, so a little on organic labeling. This actually came from the USDA and I have it attached as a resource, but um, organic labeling on different products so organic products are labeled according to the percentage of organic ingredients that they have. So this might be uh, not just produce, but maybe like a um, value added product that you're, that you're making on your farm. So this chart's helping you to understand what to expect from the different labels. 100% organic, um, the organic seal is allowed. Uh, it's containing 100% certified organic ingredients um, as part of that being certified, it does not allow any genetically modified organisms. And all of the ingredients in that product are also complying with the national list of allowed and prohibited substances. Certification is required. Um, if it's just organic, not claiming to be 100% organic, um, you can still use the seal. It has to have 95% certified organic ingredients, also no GMOs, um, complying with the national list and having certification. Made with organic, that you cannot use the seal, but at least 70% have to have organic ingredients. Um, no GMOs, again, with the national list and having to be certified. Now, with organic ingredients, the organic seal is not allowed. You can't describe the product as organic. Um, doesn't have a specific percentage of certified organic ingredients. Um, it might actually contain GMOs. Um, you don't have to comply with the national list or be certified to make that claim. All right, so now a little bit on the actual certification process in Virginia to become USDA organic certified. Um, first, you have to start adopting organic practices and depending on whether or not your conventional farm or that piece of land has been treated as a conventional farm in the past will determine how many years you need to um, start preparing your fields to become organic. Um, for instance, your uh, soil and your land that you're planting in would have to have not had any prohibited substances for three years prior. So you might need to be thinking of this ahead of time um, and give yourself plenty of time to transition. Um, next, you have to submit a completed application and fees to the certifying agency. Um, that certifier is then going to review your application um, and ensure that you are, in fact, compliant with the USDA organic regulations. Um, they're then going to conduct an on-site inspection just to see and verify everything that you've said. They're then going to review that application. Um, the certifier will, along with your inspector's report, to make sure that everything checks out. And then you will get issued your organic certificate. So adopting organic practices, a lot of the prior presentations um, prior to this day gave you a lot of really good growing practices to keep in mind, but some really great resources are actually available online for you, um, both from the USDA and other resources. Um, all of these publications that are listed here, I have attached in the resources section. So be sure um, if you're looking to transition your farm into organic that you're looking at these. Um, another th thing to think about is making sure that you give yourself plenty of time to get that land uh, transitioned if it's been used or had any prohibited substances in three years prior. 
Um, the second step would be to complete an application and fees to a certifying agency. Um, the USDA has a database online where you can search and find certifying agencies um, near us or near your location that can um, be your certifier. Often, sometimes they'll have like a headquarters and then regional people who can come out to the farm. So this database will help you search for our state and um, help you make that decision that lists everybody that the National Organic Program recognizes. Um, there's also a publication in the resources section that really details this um, more extensively and it's called Becoming a Certified Organic Producer in Virginia. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Um, the third step would then be for that certifier to review your application, ensuring that you are in compliance with the organic regulations. The um, organic regulations, because this is a uh, this is in the Code of Federal Regulations, I've got the link there online for you to go and look that up online and read exactly what those are, so that you can so you know exactly how to follow them. And I've also have the um, organic program handbook there for you to look at as well. Now, as far as your on-site inspection, um, this resource, and I have several resources on there for you to look at from uh, ATRA. So this is the um, article called Preparing for an Organic Inspection Steps and Checklists. A really great resource that helps you understand how to get ready for that certifier to come and do their own farm visit. Um, then of course, this is just where you wait. This is when your certifier will review your application um, to make sure that you're compliant. And then you will be issued your organic certificate pending uh, that you pass. Now this would have to be an annual inspection. So something to keep in mind after you get your initial certification, this would have, you'd have to um, keep doing this every year to keep it up. So just, this is just a little reminder there that it's an annual recertification process. All right, so a little bit on costs. Um, this is just an example from a certifier here that, uh, that we chose for this presentation. Um, most of the application fees or in the inspection fees that you'll have annually range um, averaging about $500. Sometimes it can go up to a thousand. Um, so it just, you know, it really depends and it depends on your certifier. Um, but that's why it's important that you understand whether or not the cost of becoming certified will pay out for you. So really know your customer base, know what's important to them, whether it be that actual certification or just the relationship with you so that you can actually tell them in a conversation what you're doing. Um, you have to remember what you can and can't do as far as displaying the seal and labeling. But um, if, it, if you're in an area where really it isn't gonna pay out to do the organic certification, then don't. Just make sure you can follow all of the practices within the National Organic Program and keep that relationship with your customers. And, um, it's just like a case by case basis. And then if, of course, if you needed any more resources from us at Extension or help with the certification process, just let us know. So a couple of references, um, but again, I have all of these listed out in our resources page. So that was a whole lot of information, um, really, you know, given to you really quickly, just for the sake of time. But again, I do wanna point out we're here always and um, the extension agents in your county. So um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, that's what we're here for and we would be happy to help. So with that, um, is, if anyone has any last questions, um, feel free to ask either Sandy or myself. And um, if not, I really appreciate everyone's participation in this series. Um, as soon as I get all of the recordings finalized, I will post those. Um, you can, I'll keep that up so you can always refer back to it and the resources. So if there aren't any questions, I really appreciate you all. Thanks for, Thank, thanks for having me, Ashley. Thank you, Sandy, very much.
All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks, you too.